So I, I'm sitting here thinking, guys are reporting now to training camp. I'm taking my show to the Rams camp on the 29th of July. That's a week from Monday. Like, it's basically here. Summer for football players is kind of over. And it happened really fast. Right? We're almost to August. August is training camp, is hard knocks, is preseason games, is the hype machine. And once we get to September, it gets real. And that realness in September, woo, is not really what it would seem. But that doesn't stop us from covering it this way, right? So what we did was we put together what we think there'll be seven overreactions upcoming in seven weeks. We're seven weeks away from the NFL. Week one of the season starts September 5th is a Thursday, so that's seven weeks from last night. And September 8th is, of course, the first Sunday of NFL games. Packers, Bears, 100th year of the NFL, longest rivalry in the NFL will open the season. Kind of makes sense. You got some amazing matchups, right? From Colts taking on the Chargers, which I love. Rams taking on the Panthers. What will Cam Newton's arm look like, assuming that he's back? Atlanta and Minnesota, two teams that are consistently hyped. And the culmination, of course, on Sunday night is New England without Le'Veon Bell, without Antonio Brown, taking on, excuse me, Pittsburgh, without Le'Veon Bell, without Antonio Brown, taking on the defending champion, New England Patriots. All right, like, that's a, that's a good Sunday. Any Sunday that begins with, uh, that, that begins with the Rams and Panthers, Titans and Browns, Chiefs and Jaguars and ends with Patriots and Steelers. That's a good day. That's a really good day. But this is what we do in the NFL. We massively overreact to one game. Like one of the things the college football season allows us to do, there'll be some early season games that are really the first week of games. But we do, we're like, well, you know, they're college kids. There's no preseason games. They're still figuring out. And then they have a couple of games against Sisters of the Poor. And then we get to real football and it builds up. And generally the teams that you knew that you thought were good, Alabama and Clemson, were going to be good and they'll be good at the end. The only question is, can they beat the Georgias of the world? You know, can they win the semifinals? Who comes out of the Big 12 between Oklahoma and Texas and et cetera, and Michigan and Ohio State and but in the NFL, because there's so much turnover year to year, week to week, we overreact. Seven weeks from now, there are seven things that we're going to overreact to. Remember last year, it was Aaron Rodgers and an improbable comeback on Sunday night football against the same Bears. Khalil Mack, after being traded, was ridiculous in the first half, but then he seemed to run out of gas. This year's game is in Chicago, but this year's game, they won't have, no one will have seen Matt LaFleur's offense combined with Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers before that Thursday night game. Like, they're not going to show anything in the preseason. And so a fully healthy Aaron Rodgers with a wide receiving core, which has yet another year to evolve, a defense in the second year in the Mike Patton system, on the road against the Bears, a team who he has consistently, no matter how good or bad the Bears are, dominated. Seven weeks from now, Matt LaFleur is going to be a genius. What an incredible hire. I like, look, the time where Aaron Rodgers' leadership and evolution will be challenged will be when they face adversity, when he plays poorly, when the offense six weeks in, gets figured out when people have tape on what they're doing with Aaron Rodgers within that system. But week one is not that week. With no book on Rodgers inside that offense, Rodgers against the Bears, and a Bears defense, which, by the way, lost their defensive coordinator to the Denver Broncos, it feels like seven weeks from now, we're going to be sitting here going, see, Matt LaFleur was a great hire. He knows Sean McVay, and that makes him a great coach. Seven weeks from now, it feels like we're going to call the Patriots dynasty over for the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth time. Right now, look, a realist will point out that 
it wasn't just Brady, but Brady, Breeze, and other older quarterbacks like a Phillip Rivers faded down the stretch. It is the same Tom Brady who threw two and what should have been three interceptions against Kansas City Chiefs. Like, he did not perform well late in the season up to his own standards. And whether it's Father Time or the fact they don't have a great receiving core, you know, they've, they've lost Rob Gronkowski. They've lost guys on the defensive side of the football. Going against, uh, up against the Steelers team that this is their Super Bowl. This is their. This will be their chance to prove that they're a better team, in spite of the fact they don't have as much talent without Le'Veon and Antonio Brown. And the Patriots always seem to come out of the gate slowly because they use the first four weeks as extended training camp. Whether it was Detroit last year or Kansas City a couple years ago, how many times have we seen the Patriots get dismantled early in the season? Where you go, all right, now is the time I'm selling my Patriots stock. Knowing full well, they get the Bills twice, the Jets twice, the Dolphins twice, and ultimately they'll be in the playoffs and they'll be fine. But the power running offense is designed for late in the year. They are built to win in the playoffs, much like Shaq was never in shape in the regular season. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, though they will pretend to care and will learn a lot from it, seven weeks from now, we're going to be saying the Patriots dynasty is over. Um... Seven weeks from now, I kind of feel like Ryan Fitzpatrick will have once again proved the skeptics wrong. Maybe Josh Rosen is the starting quarterback as they take on the Baltimore Ravens, where you have two of last year's rookies going up against each other. But Fitzpatrick has been a guy who consistently has shown that in short doses, he can light up the league. But in longer doses... He's Ryan Fitzpatrick. Fitz magic eventually wears out and the backup comes in or the starter comes back and he's the better quarterback. It happened in Tampa last year. It, it, they, the last time he had a long-term contract was with Buffalo. We know how that ended. Ryan Fitzpatrick, week one of the season, feels like a locked-up cinch if he can win the start that will throw for 400 yards and will somehow say that we were all wrong about Fitzpatrick, when if you've watched him, I mean, the case study in Ryan Fitzpatrick is always the same. A couple of really good games, he starts to force things, his lack of arm strength uh, tends to come back and get him. Now he's playing outdoors, unlike week one of the season last year where he played indoors. Granted, the warm weather helps him because of his age, but ultimately he gets exposed. And against the Ravens defense, which lost all of their dynamic pass rushers. Seven weeks from now, we're going to say, Man, just too much scoring in this league. We have gotten away from what football is about. Too much scoring, too much throwing, not enough running in the football. Defense doesn't matter. Because the rules are all set up for the offense. The offenses will be ready to go. Younger quarterbacks will be throwing the ball and getting rid of it more quickly, only having half the field. But we'll have... We'll have ridiculous numbers because early in the season, they call everything on the defense. Everything. Every pass interference or even ones that aren't called can now be reviewed. Every amount of contact close to the head or using the head will be penalized. Every defensive hold will be called. Why? Because in order to get attention or to grasp the fans, the fantasy football fans, the first month, two months of the season is about offense. Offense wins games, defense wins championships. Oh, seven weeks from now, we're going to say Le'Veon Bell's out of shape, right? It doesn't just feel that way. They take it on the Buffalo Bills, playing at home, first week of the season, and Le'Veon won't look like his old Le'Veon self. Or maybe he will, but it's really hard for Le'Veon Bell, who likes to get to the line of scrimmage and yawn and take a nap and then make a cut, to play that way when you're not used to playing with Le'Veon Bell, and he might not have the burst having had a year and a half off of football. Like the idea that a guy who hasn't taken a snap in a year and a half, who chose not to go to OTAs, who will likely not get many carries in, um, in the preseason, will somehow be sharp as attack week one of the season, seems hard to believe. He may have fresh legs, but he won't be fresh cutting the football. Le'Veon Bell will, be, will say he's a complete bust, even though at the end of the day, 
He'll find a way, if he stays healthy, to put up yards, to figure it out. They'll find ways to get him the football. Adam Gase will make it work. Maybe he's overpaid. But without a great offensive line, without a ton of knowledge of how to play with him, and without playing football for a year and a half, Le'Veon's not going to be sharp. No one is when they have that much of a layoff. Um, and, and lastly, don't we think that Cliff Kingsbury is going to look like a genius? Don't we just assume that a new offensive system with a new young quarterback, where they're going to fire it up and fire the football, whether or not they win, whether or not it's sustainable, won't seem to matter to those of us in the media. We will overreact and say the Patriots are done and Le'Veon's out of shape, that Matt LaFleur's a genius, but Cliff Kingsbury air raid style week one, it'll work because people won't have seen it. But much like young quarterbacks or Even starting pitchers, it's the second time around where people figure you out. Seven weeks from now, we'll overreact to the NFL. We always do. I do it. Colin does it. You do it as fans. We do it on every network. And those are my seven guesses on what will happen. 